Hi, welcome to Actualol. Today I'm doing a vlog about the games that I'm keeping in my collection this month. Games that I've had for a while, I've managed to play them, and I've decided they're good enough to stay in my collection. The first game that's staying in my collection this month is Time Stories, which is an immersive storytelling game where you play as time travelers, traveling back in time to different worlds and taking on the characters within that world. It's also a scenario-based game, so the base game comes with a scenario set in a 1920s asylum in France, and you play characters in that world, you're trying to solve that mystery, and you're interacting with other characters and making decisions. But then the next scenario, the Marcy case, is a completely different world, completely different characters, and then the third one is set in a fantasy world, so it's an alternate reality, and there are more planned. There's an ancient Egypt one coming, which I'm really excited about, and they're gonna release one every quarter, at least that's the idea. It's like having a DVD player and then playing a different film on it each time. They're, no two games are the same. Once you've played a scenario, that's it, you, you're kind of done. You can play it a few times because the idea is that you loop back in time. If you don't complete it in the first loop, you kind of go back and try again. Um, and so you use the previous knowledge to maybe take different paths. And that's really cool. Uh, but yeah, once you're done, it's done. And uh, so there's no replayability and some people might find that kind of annoying and it's kind of expensive. For me, the experience is so rich uh, that I don't mind paying that bit more. It, it's memorable. It's like doing an escape room. It might cost like 20, 30 quid just for an hour, but it's like an incredibly memorable, interactive, amazing hour of your life. And Time Stories kind of has some of that. I just love storytelling games. Time Stories completely delivers on that front. Uh, the game mechanisms, apart from that, are fairly simple. There was is one really interesting part of it, which is if you're in a location, you have you can see this sort of panorama, um, and the artwork is incredible in this game. You pick a place to go to, and you get to pick up the card. But rather than just read the card to the other players, you have to explain what's on that card. So there's this interesting kind of sharing storytelling aspect to it, and that's just really cool. Time Stories is really good fun. I can imagine keeping this for a long time. I want to play all those scenarios. I can't see myself getting bored because each scenario is going to do something different. My only slight quibble with it is that the themes they pick so far are just kind of obvious. Uh, for example, like the third one is in a fantasy world. I just kind of think they could have been more creative. When I first heard about this game, Traveling Back in Time, I was thinking about, you know, going back and trying to catch Jack the Ripper or trying to kill Hitler, things exciting moments in history, real history, and so far they haven't really tapped into that. I'm hoping that they get more creative or they, they turn to those stories as they develop the new scenarios. Um, but as it is, even if they stick to generic stuff, I will still love and play this game. Time Stories is staying in my collection. The second game staying in my collection this month is Watson and Holmes, which is a mystery solving game with another scenario based uh, situation where you each scenario have a set of cards. So let's say, for example, someone's been murdered and you're having to solve the murder. You're trying to find who did it, what the weapon was and where it took place, maybe. And so you have to visit locations that are pertinent to the case. You have a, an opening story. And, and everything you've learned from that, do you go and visit and do you go and speak to the victim's wife or do you go visit their workplace or do you go and see the crime scene for more detail there? And so you'll be placing your pawn on a card and you'll get to read that card and you're making notes on what you find. So there's a fair amount of note taking in this game and if that's not for you, then maybe this game isn't for you. I just find it incredible. The mysteries are in brilliantly written. Um, there's these moments where you find something out um, or something just clicks, like you found out about a tiny bit of information, almost by accident, um, a couple of turns ago, and then it just clicks in your brain, and you're like, oh my god, that was the murder weapon all along, but you didn't realise it until this other bit of information kind of brought it into light, and it makes you feel like a detective. I can't emphasise enough how well these the mysteries I've played were written, and there's competition involved. You're playing against the other players to solve the crime first, so you can outbid people to go to a location quicker than them, so you get to look at the card and they don't. Or you can block people off from certain locations, so they struggle to get that information. And then you're racing to put your answer in first, but if the person who gets there first with the answer isn't right, they stay in the game as Sherlock Holmes and then other people can visit them to check their answers with them, which kind of balances the mystery a little bit. If, if you're really struggling as a group to solve the mystery, then you can go and check the wrong answers of the person who already submitted their answers to see 
uh, compare them to yours and that will help you deduce down. Um, I think this game's incredible and I'm going to cover it in more detail in a different video, but for now, Watson and Holmes is staying in my collection. The third game staying in my collection this month is a party game called Brick Party. One player plays as an architect, trying to get the other player, the builder, to build things with Lego bricks. So you're playing in partnerships and you're racing against the other partnerships to build the construction. The fastest, but also the most accurately. And this game is just chaotic fun, you're shouting over each other, you're trying to get your words across, trying to get the person to understand you. But also this game has these rules that change the game slightly each time. So one uh, round you might not be able to, the architect can't actually talk to the builder. Another round the builder can't open their eyes. They, have to, they can't see the bricks that they're using or they can only do it with one hand. All of the, they, they make it fresh each time you play the game and they just make it so much fun. There's another game out there called Ugtect, which I also have about um, getting people to build blocks and you're using kind of caveman language and hitting people over the head with the club. And that one is silly fun, but I think actually this one works a bit better. I got this in France from a Yellow Games, but it is coming um, to America from Renegade Games. If you like party games, you should definitely check out Brick Party. The fourth game staying in my collection this month is Between Two Cities from Stonemaier Games. And this is a game of building two cities with the players to your left and right of you. You're drafting tiles, so the tiles represent buildings in the city, so you've got houses and shops and pubs and offices and factories and parks. On your turn, you'll pick two. When you flip them over, you have to decide which city they're going to go in. Are they going to go in the one on your left with that player or the one on your right? And then you also have to decide how to arrange your city because for example, you can't have, you don't want to have factories next to houses and you want to have parks together and they work in different ways. You want to have shops in a line. And so these tiles, there's this interesting set collection aspect to some of them or there's this spatial element and that just kind of grabs you. There's a thematic nature to all of those things. Like you want to have offices next to pubs so that people can go and drink. You're collaborating with the people next to you, but you will only win on your own if your lower scoring city is the highest out of all the lower scoring cities. Um, so it's it's this balance you have to do where you have to make both of your cities good. You can't make one of them way better than the other one and neglect that one because then you won't win the game. And it's really easy to teach. Uh, the tiles have the explanation as how they work on them. So that's really cool thing. It's a light game, but it's a good proper game that you can play with a big group and those are hard to come by. And I just really enjoy this game between two cities. The fifth game staying in my collection this month is Mafia de Cuba, which is a twist on the hidden traitor bluffing genre. This game is the box itself. It's a cigar box with a hidden door and inside you'll find rolls, which are poker chips, and diamonds. One player plays as the godfather and he can take as many diamonds as he likes out of the box before he passes it round. And each player in turn will decide whether to take a roll, say to become a loyal henchman, or whether to be a thief and steal some diamonds. The bo everyone chooses that in turn and then the box comes back to the Godfather and he has to work out who's stolen his diamonds. So he can interrogate all the other players, but ultimately has to decide, are they a thief or not? Now, of course, the other players can bluff and lie, but they can also use the information they've seen to stick other people in it, or they can help the Godfather if they're a loyal henchman and they want to win the game with him. It's just, what's so interesting about this game is you can decide what role you take. In games like The Resistance, people are forced to be a spy and some people don't like that. In this game, you don't have to be a spy, you get to decide if you're a spy and that's really cool. And so that's why I'll be keeping Mafia to Cubit in my collection. It's also really short and just a fun, quick to play hidden traitor game. Those are the games that I'm keeping in my collection this month. There's links to all of them in the description of this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel to see more of the same. I'm Actual Lol on Facebook and Twitter. I'm John Perkis. Thanks for watching.